Hi, my name is Dr. Daniel Leger. I'm an orthopedic surgeon and the uh, co-director of sports medicine here at the Excel Health Orthopedics Institute. I want to talk a little bit today about total shoulder and reverse total shoulder arthroplasty. A little bit of background about the shoulder joint itself. It's a ball and socket joint. The socket is what's called the glenoid and the glenoid is not a very big structure and one of the reasons for that is because the shoulder is such, such a mobile joint the, uh, the socket has to be relatively smaller to allow for that motion. So a lot of physicians refer to the, the shoulder joint uh, as similar to a golf ball on a tee. So with all that shoulder motion, you start to have problems, whether it's with the rotator cuff, which is a group of muscles that helps control the, the shoulder joint and support it out in space, or problems with the joint itself, which can uh, lead to arthritis. So arthritis is a degenerative condition. It's uh, a wear and tear type of, type of process that gets worse and worse over time. And the articular cartilage, which is at the end of the bones, so that, which lets the joint glide smoothly, starts to wear out. So patients often experience stiffness in the shoulder. Um, they can experience a grinding type of sensation when they move it. They can have issues with overhead activity. It's difficult to do things like put groceries away in, in some of the higher shelves in their uh, cupboard, uh, things of that nature, wash their hair, things like that. So it sometimes can be difficult to tell whether or not the uh, shoulder pain is coming from a rotator cuff problem or shoulder arthritis. And so that's when it may be a good time to, to come into the office and be evaluated. We can take an x-ray which will show uh, if there is a lot of arthritis in the joint. You see the joint space where the cartilages start to get more and more narrow and things like bone spurs start to develop. So treatment for shoulder arthritis starts with non-operative uh, treatments and those consist of activity modification where you just try to avoid doing overhead activity as much as possible oral anti-inflammatory medications like Advil, Motrin, Aleve, things in that, in that family of medicines, as long as they don't upset the patient's stomach or they're not on blood thinners, things of that nature. Anti-inflammatories can be a good option. Icing it down at the end of the day if it's sore, uh, some stretching and strengthening exercises to a certain extent. If all that fails, then you can, the next step up in treatment are injections. So the cortisone injections can be given, uh, they can be given every three months. Um, and hopefully the first couple injections you get uh, will last you longer than three months. They may last you a year or more even, but uh, the bare minimum is three months between injections. Once all non-operative treatments uh, fail, then that's when you start to consider surgical intervention for shoulder arthritis. The shoulder joint's the third most commonly replaced joint after um, the hip and the knee, and it's gaining popularity because techniques have been refined and implants have been refined, and because of that, patients are starting to have less pain and get more function afterwards. There's two types of shoulder replacements. There's a regular or what we call an anatomic shoulder replacement, and there's a reverse total shoulder uh, replacement. And an anatomic shoulder is called anatomic because you leave the anatomy where it is, you just replace it with uh, the components of the, of the total shoulder. So um, you take a small sliver of bone off of the ball and you put a new ball in its place. And for the socket, you, uh, you resurface that enough that you can put a plastic covering over the socket that attaches to the bone. And then between those two components, now you no longer have the rubbing of the, of the arthritic joint anymore, and patients get a lot of, of pain relief from that. You have to have an intact rotator cuff for that to function, or you can't have extensive rotator cuff tearing. If you do have extensive rotator cuff tearing, you can still have a shoulder replacement, but you'd have what's called a reverse total shoulder replacement. That functions without a rotator cuff because it alters the anatomy. You put the, you put the ball where the socket is and the socket becomes where the ball used to be. And because of that, the main shoulder muscle called the deltoid can start to compensate for not having a rotator cuff and patients regain a severe amount of motion and they have excellent pain relief with that as well. So just a little bit about the recovery process from a total shoulder 
that usually, after you have surgery, it usually requires an overnight stay. Um, you usually rehab from between three and four months total, but as, as the process goes on, you require less and less. So where you would start at maybe two to three days a week, as you get closer to the end of your rehab process, you might go down to once a week, once every other week, something like that. Um, you do have to wear a, a sling for six weeks and you do have to sleep in that. Uh, you have a five pound weight restriction for three months. And the main reason for that is it takes about three months for uh, the soft tissues to heal and the, the bone to grow into the implant to, uh, enough that we can safely allow you to lift more weight than that. And you have a lifelong weight restriction of about 25 pounds. So shoulder replacements work great, but they, um, they can only stand up to moderate usage. They're not intended for really heavy duty everyday lifting. So they're a great option for the right person uh, when all non-operative treatments have failed. Uh, so if that's something, if you're experiencing shoulder pain and uh, you know, you're not sure where to go uh, from there, uh, please reach out to us and we'd be, we'd be happy to take care of you. Thank you.